The next reaction I want to teach you is adding a peroxy acid to an alkene. This is pretty simple and straightforward. If you have an alkene like the one I've shown here, and you add this type of molecule. Now, rather than having a methyl here, you could have various different types of carbon hydrogen chains here. This type of molecule is called a peroxy acid. Now, you need to distinguish between this type of molecule and a carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid has an OH right at this position, whereas a peroxy acid has two oxygens, an oxygen here bonded to an OH. It is slightly different, but is distinctive. If you treat an alkene under these conditions with a peroxy acid, it will take the alkene and turn it into a three-membered ring that contains an oxygen at the point. This type of product is called an epoxide. Now, I don't require you to know the mechanism of this reaction. If you'd like to learn it, though, just for curiosity's sake, I'll be happy to show it to you in class. Or you can look it up on the internet. Our next reaction is hydroboration oxidation. Now you might remember from earlier in this lecture that if you take an alkene and stir it with water in the presence of catalytic acid, you'll end up placing an OH on the more substituted carbon, that is the internal one. The reason for that is because it traverses an intermediate that has a more stable carbocation according to Markovnikov's rule. So let me ask you this question. What if I really, really, really want my OH to be on the other carbon? I'm trying to synthesize something where I need my OH to be over here and not on the internal carbon. Is there anything I can do? Do I have to have magical fairies or elves or something come and place my OH where I want it? Well, as it turns out, the answer is no. There do exist conditions that can allow you to accomplish just that. These are the conditions. You take the same alkene and treat it over two steps with these reagents, BH3THF in step one and H2O2 hydroxide and H2O in step two. H2O2, by the way, is called hydrogen peroxide. These conditions will place an OH in the other position, which is called the anti-Markovnikov position. Thus, if I'm ever in a circumstance where I need to add an OH to an alkene, but I want it to be in the opposite position from where it would normally go, I do these conditions. One thing I want to point out is that when you are writing out these steps, do not forget to number the reagents. This is a two-step reaction. You have to write one, BH3THF, and two, H2O2 hydroxide and H2O. Another thing I want to tell you is this. I am not going to require you, my students, to learn the mechanism for this reaction. If any of you are interested in it, however, I'd be happy to show it to you. This reaction is called hydroboration oxidation. And it is once again the way that you can add an OH to an alkene and place the OH in the anti-Markovnikov position. The next and last reaction that I want to show you is the addition of hydrogen, H2, to an alkene. Before getting into this, however, I need to teach you about two terms called oxidation and reduction. Back when I was a really young and inexperienced graduate student, I remember looking at reactions and having my professors tell me, as you can see, this reaction reduces our starting material, or they would say, this reaction oxidizes our reactant. And when I was looking at it, I didn't have the ability to really clearly distinguish whether a reaction was uh, a reduction or an oxidation very easily. Now, over the course of the ensuing years, I gradually learned and figured out some really easy ways to spot oxidations and reductions. Now, as you learn in general chemistry, the 100% tried and true, always correct definition of reduction is gaining electrons. So if something gains electrons in a process, it has been reduced. In contrast, the always correct definition of oxidation is losing electrons. So if something loses electrons in a process, it has been oxidized. We can remember that by remembering Leo the lion says grrr, which stands for losing electrons is oxidation and gaining electrons is reduction. Another way we can remember that is by remembering oil rig. Oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. Now once again, there are certain processes or reactions that we sometimes see where it's not extremely clear when you just look at the reaction whether or not it was a reduction or an oxidation. So as I mentioned earlier, I have seen over the course of my years of experience a couple ways of being able to really quickly pick out an oxidation and a reduction. Here they are. Generally speaking, reductions 
are also reactions in which you see a starting material or reactant gain bonds to hydrogen or lose bonds to oxygen or lose carbon carbon double or triple bonds now this is not always universally the case it depends what's happening to the molecule overall but very simply stated if i have a process where going from reactant to product my reactant gains bonds to hydrogen or loses bonds to oxygen or has a double or a triple bond as a reactant and then loses that and becomes all single bonds in the product that is usually a reduction in contrast the opposites would be oxidations if i have a reactant that in a process gains bonds to oxygen loses bonds to hydrogen and gains double or triple bonds going from the left side of the reaction to the right i can say very simply that that is usually an oxidation now you might wonder why in the world am i wasting your time telling you this well it'll become pretty clear in the next slide if i take an alkene it can be any alkene and i treat it with hydrogen gas h2 and a metal catalyst now it has to be one of these four metals palladium platinum rhodium or nickel what it does is it will turn my carbon carbon double bond into a carbon carbon single bond and add these two hydrogens on top so each of these carbons gains a bond to a hydrogen what kind of process is this is it an oxidation or reduction well you can see that going from left to right i've gone from having a carbon carbon double bond to carbon carbon single bond in other words i've lost a double or a triple bond by that token from my previous slide this is a reduction similarly you can see that i've gained bonds to hydrogen as i've gone from left to right thus we can also see once again that it is a reduction i only mention this because frequently you'll hear organic chemists conversationally saying i took an alkene and reduced it under hydrogenation conditions and what that really means is i took an alkene and i added hydrogen atoms to it it is a reducing condition because i'm gaining bonds to hydrogen i now want to show you a very important nuance about this reaction it's been experimentally shown that if you take this molecule dimethylcyclohexene with this substitution pattern treat it under hydrogenation conditions that is hydrogen gas and metal catalyst remember it's palladium platinum rhodium or nickel these two methyl groups always end up cis to each other in the product what in the world does that mean what it means is the two hydrogens are always added to the alkene on the same side as each other now i could in contrast imagine the hydrogens being added from underneath this alkene and both of these bonds to these carbons ending up being wedged instead of dashed as it turns out for this particular product there's no difference between having them both be dashed or both be wedged both of them are cis dimethyl cyclohexane why in the world do the hydrogens add on the same side the answer can be found by looking at the mechanism here it is what occurs when an alkene has hydrogens added to it is the alkene whose double bond is encapsulated in this purple circle comes down and nestles right on the surface of the metal catalyst the metal catalyst which has previously absorbed hydrogen atoms from the hydrogen gas in solution and planted them on its surface then adds two of those hydrogen atoms to the alkene from the same face thus these two hydrogen atoms always get added on the same side and as a result we always end up with them being cis to each other in a cyclic ring such as this or some other similar compound keep in mind then the bottom line is that any time i add hydrogens to an alkene using these types of conditions i always get them being added on the same side thus if i have a product which can either be cis or trans it will always end up being cis which brings me to this question what are the products of the following reactions and of course here it is what about adding hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst to this type of molecule carbon carbon triple bond this type of molecule is called an alkyne what in the world happens well, as it turns out if you add hydrogen gas and a metal catalyst to an alkyne like this it will add hydrogens all over the alkyne and reduce it all the way down to carbon carbon single bond alkane now the only reason i'm showing you this isn't because it pertains to this chapter at all it's because it's a highlight of what we're going to discuss in an upcoming chapter on the reactions of alkynes that brings us to the end of this discussion and the end of our 
coverage of chapter 4. Please study all of their reactions and their mechanisms. Be sure to become fluent enough with them that you can predict the products of any alkene reacting under any of the conditions that I've shown and explain using the mechanisms I've elucidated why those products are formed. Until next time, have a wonderful day.